How we spend our days, daily life of a Muslim. How we spend our days, daily life of a Muslim. How we spend our days, daily life of a Muslim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله الحمد لله we commence and start in the name of Allah Azza wa Jal, who is our provider, sustainer, cherisher and nourisher. We send peace and blessings upon his most exalted and celebrated Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon his illustrious family and noble companions Alayhi Muridwan. You are watching the daily life of a Muslim and we are back with another power pack episode in this blessed month of Ramadan al Kareem. May Allah Azza wa Jalla make your day easy for the viewers of Madani channel as well as accept our fasting, our ibadah that we perform only for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, dear viewers, by the end of today's program, we are to identify that aspect within our bodies which is known as nafs. It is a component, it is something that every human has known as nafs. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, we are going to identify as to how can we control the nafs, the carnal desires, and together with that, how can we abstain and protect ourselves from this great evil known as fame? How does nafs and fame have a connection with each another is what we are going to be discussing. And if you catch on, inshallah, Zawajal, it will actually assist and help you in order to bring about the sawwuf. It will assist and help you to, inshallah, Zawajal, get more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also assist us in identifying the traps and the tricks of the devil. We would love to listen to a beautiful kalam composed and written by none other than Imam al Kalam, Kalam al Imam Ash Shah Mulana Mufti Ahmad Rida Khan, Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. Let's listen to this beautiful kalam and when we do return, we will continue with our discussion. Sallu al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi. وسلم. يا مصطفى يا مجتبى خير الورى صلي على صلي على صلي على صلي على صلي على صلي على صلي रुख दिन है या मेरे समा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं शब जुल्फ या मुझ के खुदा शब जुल्फ या मुझ के खुदा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं सल्ले अल्लाह सल्ले अल्लाह सल्ले सर्वे जा फिजा कुमरी ने सर्वे जा फिजा है रत ने झुंझला कर कहा है रत ने झुंझला कर कहा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं Sunday, I'm not Sunday, I'm not Sunday. 
خورشید تھا کس زور پر خورشید تھا کس زور پر کیا بڑھ کے چمکا تھا کمر کیا بڑھ کے چمکا تھا کمر بے پر جب وہ رخ ہوا بے پر جب وہ رخ ہوا یہ بھی نہیں وہ بھی نہیں ڈر تھا کہ اسیا کی سزا ڈر تھا کہ اسیا کی سزا اب ہو گیا روز جزا اب ہو گیا روز جزا دی ان کی رحمت نے سدا دی ان کی رحمت نے سدا یہ بھی نہیں وہ بھی نہیں دن لگو میں کھونا تجھے دن لگو میں کھونا تجھے شب صبح تک سونا تجھے شب صبح تک سونا تجھے شر میں نبی خوف خدا شر میں نبی خوف خدا یہ بھی نہیں وہ بھی نہیں رنگی رضا یا توتی نغمہ سرا یا توتی نغمہ سرا حق یہ کہ واصف ہے تیرا حق یہ کہ واصف ہے تیرا یہ بھی نہیں وہ بھی نہیں رخ دن ہے یا مہرے سما رخ دن ہے یا مہرے سما یہ بھی نہیں وہ بھی نہیں شب ظلف یا موش کے خطا شب ظلف یا موش کے خطا یہ بھی نہیں وہ بھی نہیں Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Welcome back dear viewers after listening to this amazing and beautiful kalam as I mentioned before. Don't be self-conceited for fame. This topic dear viewers of Madhini channel is actually very general. It's generalized for this reason because uh, out of 8 billion population on this planet, Allahu Akbar, this is something which man has always been affected with from the time Allah Azza wa Jalla has brought this earth and this creation into existence. That we have far too long tricked and we have confused ourselves in this way that we have lied to ourselves. For far too long we have cheated our own selves. A person may ask this question how, as you can see from the very topic and discussion we have this, uh, in this program, don't be self-conceited for fame. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So dear viewers of Madani channel, we have maybe perhaps fooled the world that we have no fame, nor do we desire any fame or name. 
But in reality, this is what the nafs is crying out for. This is what the desires and the nafs is working towards. And there are many examples, and of course, blessed ahadith of the Master sallallahu alaihi wasallama, how people try and uh, entrap themselves and entangle themselves in this misconception and in the path of name and fame, and how this fame allows a person to have ostentation, to have pride and ego that enters his heart and his mind and then ruins all of his worships. You know, a very beautiful example to identify that how the pious predecessors would actually punish their nafs. Nafs is something which you and I possess, we have according to the scholars and the researchers, the scholars of the Sawuf as well, that have stated nafs is within your body and it is placed below your navel, according to some narrations. Allahu Akbar, we are some even said above the navel, whereas some said close to the heart, some said that it's running in your bloodstream. Nafs is there, it's the desire that we have. And it is the same desire which will take the taste of death according to the divine promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. But we don't train this nafs which is crazy for fame. It is this nafs which confuses a person whether he wants name and fame or whether he doesn't want. You may feel that you don't want but your nafs wants it and many a times you don't even know whether my thawab has all gone away due to this ostentation. And we are under this impression that Allah has rewarded us immensely, whereas we have lost all of the reward due to the showing off and due to the pride that enters the heart due to this problem, dear viewers. Now, here I want to explain a very beautiful parable which will open this even more, inshallah. It will expand the understanding of the situation. Hadrat Sayyiduna Abu Muhammad Murtaish Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. Now, he has said, being a great wali of Allah, a great pious personality, he says, I performed Hajj many times. And he says, mostly without any provisions. Zade Safar, Zade Rah, Jise Kete, Hamare Pas Nate. I did not have any provisions for this journey. He says, later on, I became aware that it was all the deception of my nafs. I realized this when my mother ordered me to fill a container of water and bring it to her. And my nafs considered this to be a burden. It says, hence I understood that my nafs made me bear the hardships of the Hajj pilgrimage just to gain the pleasure for itself. That see, I performed the Hajj without any provisions. Just to make the nafs happy, it happened. Hadrat Sayyiduna Abu Muhammad Murtaish Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. But he says, I understood that my nafs made me bear the hardships of the Hajj pilgrimage just to gain the pleasure for itself. Deceiving me, Allahu Akbar. He says, it is my nafs. If my nafs had become absolutely obedient, it would not have considered it a great burden to fulfill a shari'i declared right, yani obeying my mother. How can just bringing a container of water for my mum become difficult, whereas I went on a long journey without any provisions, though I never felt that difficult? Because that was for my nafs. Because that was my nafs wanted. But my nafs never wanted me to serve my mother or oh, made me feel as if this one container of water felt as if it was a burden. Allahu Akbar. So we have just learned now, dear viewers, from this parable, our pious predecessors had an excellent Madani mindset and were extremely humble. Allahu Akbar. Some people meet and treat others with gentleness, sometimes with politeness, but deal with their own parents, with their siblings, with their children, with their uncles and aunts, with the hardships and rudeness. Don't you see this happening in society? Why is this? A huge and big question mark. Why is this? Because showing good manners to common people, any outside the home, brings public acceptance. Ah, it brings about recognition. It brings about name and fame. It brings about public acceptance. But there is no special hope of attaining the very same respect and fame and name through displaying good manners within the home environment. Yani, اپنے بچوں کے سامنے اپنی اہلیہ کے سامنے اگر میں وہی برتاؤں کروں گا تو مجھے وہی رسپیکٹ نہیں ملنے والا ہے جو مجھے پبلک میں ملتے ہیں لوگ ہاتھ پیر چونکتے ہیں لوگ ناچریف کے لیے بلاتے ہیں پیپل کال می ٹو گیو بیانز پیپل کال می ٹو بیکم دے ایم سی اینڈ بیکم دا ماسٹر آف سیرومنیز آئی ایم کالڈ ٹو بی دا چھ پرسن ایٹ سرٹن پلیس آئی ایم کال ٹو لیڈ دا میٹنگ آئی ایم کال فار دس اینڈ کال فار دیٹ آل آف دس رسپیکٹ دیٹ آئی گیٹ ان پبلک واز بیکاز آف دس ایکشن آئی ریڈ ڈو دا ایکشن وی آئی گیٹ نیم اینڈ فیم But the very same action earns me no respect in my home environment. So the person then does this for his own nafs. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us, dear viewers of Madani channel. This is the reality and the harsh reality which I'm speaking about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding that similarly, the parable that we just heard 
right now, dear viewers, contains a great lesson for those Islamic brothers and sisters who enthusiastically participate in mustahab deeds, but show, you know, carelessness and heedlessness in those actions which are actually farub and obligatory. And wajib, such as obeying the parents, providing children with shari'i, complying upbringing, jiha, and gaining fard knowledge. These are those components which are important for us to gain and to get. Something which is fard, I can't do. Something which is mustahab, if I leave, there's no sin. For that, we want to go and do and run. Why? Because the nafs wants us. Because sometimes the mustahab act could earn you that reward which even the fard wouldn't do for you. May Allah protect us. It is a fact that the virtuous deeds that earn the doer fame are performed easily, dear viewers. Very easily because it earns you fame and name despite being difficult to perform. This is because the pleasure that is attained from the fame and respect converts even the most difficult task into an easy one. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Remember that desire and fame leads one to doom, dear viewers. Let's listen to this beautiful narration of the beloved master, sallallahu alayhi wa to learn some lesson, dear viewers. Our aqa and our master sallallahu alayhi wa in his fragrant narration and hadith says, avoid mixing obedience to Allah with love for being praised by people. Least your deeds get ruined. So avoid mixing obedience to Allah azza wa jal with love for being praised. So any ibadat that you do, any worship that you do, not for people, not to gain the wows and the wonders, not to gain those praises from people that will stand there and, and praise you for hours and say, what a tahajjud guzar, what a namazi, what a haji. Allahu Akbar. If the ibadat was done for the pleasure of Allah, then keep it concealed. Keep the timing concealed. Keep your actions concealed. Keep your tears concealed. Do not disclose this to others. Then that ibadat was done for the pleasure of Allah. Azzawajal. Or else on the day of Qiyamah, you will be told to go and fetch your reward for the people for whom you read your salah. May Allah forgive us. Another hadith of the beloved Nabi in Sunan Tirmizi Sharif. Two hungry wolves do not cause as much damage to a herd of goats as is caused by love for wealth and fame to the religion of a Muslim. Allah. So two hungry wolves do not cause as much as damage to the herd of a goats. May Allah protect us. May Allah guide us. May Allah assist and help us, dear viewers of Madani Channel. Because the honest truth is love for fame and ostentation are from the deadliest inner deceptions leading to doom and destructions. It is from within the nafs, brother in Islam. We have not recognized our nafs as yet. In fact, Ghosi Pak rahmatullahi ta'ala says, if you have attained the company of an Arif Billah, the one who has the recognition of Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah Azza wa Jal, through the barakah of that person's company will grant you the recognition of your own nafs. And if you recognize your nafs, then you have recognized Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. What a beautiful teaching, dear viewers. This is the teaching of Ghusba. May Allah Kareem reward those Muslims who are watching this program and who make firm intention to understand that we need to find out and we need to investigate. We need to research furthermore and give enough time for ourselves. I need to, you know, get to the bottom of this deadliest inner deception. Where is it? How can I get rid of it? Because it is there to destroy my actions and my amal, my good deeds. Scholars, worshippers, and those treading the path of the hereafter are all affected with the very same inner uh, deadliest deception, dear viewers, that I'm talking about. Whether he's a namazi, whether he's an abid guzar, equally, all of them are attacked by this. At times, these people perform acts of worship with great efforts. I'm talking about the namazi. I'm speaking about the haji sahab who goes for hajj. The one who gives lots of charity in the path of Allah. Jiha, these people that I'm speaking about perform acts of worship with great efforts. Suppress their desires of their nafs. They go against their nafs in the middle of the winter. They will wake up and perform their tahajjud salah. Allahu Akbar. In the cold winter, instead of the water, ice is stuck in the tap. You can't even make wubu. But they sacrifice. Refrain from apparent sins and even more. They even avoid doubtful things, dear viewers, but they wish to satisfy their nafs by informing people about their pious and religious activities. The very same people, dear viewers, say what they say. For example, I have done this and that. I have 
delivered what a bayan and speech at what a place subhanallah i have already been booked for so many speeches that i've got no more booking left in my diary you can actually hear it in my voice i can't even speak anymore because this is how i recite kalams and not for so many hours do you know as far as madhari qafila is concerned with me there are so many other brothers that also travel with madhari qafila remember dear viewers these people that talk about their ibadat and their worships and activities for the pleasure of allah that they have done these people inform others about their knowledge and deeds that they gain due to which they gain respect they gain honor they gain fame they gain the pleasure when they become famous when they become known because of this then their nafs insists that now they can inform more and more people about it people began to respect me now let me narrate the very same karamat to other people so i can gain and accumulate more wonders and wow some people so that more people can give me envelopes and more people can respect me and more people can love me hence they try to find further ways to inform people about their knowledge and about their skills allah akbar they are not satisfied with the fact that the reward gaining the reward granting creator is aware of their deeds they're not happy about the fact that allah the one who gives the sawab the one who has preserved the reward for you he knows about your deeds no they become pleased when praised by others others must praise me Allah Akbar. they are not satisfied with the praises given by the creator but they are only going to be happy when others praise them the nafs of such a person knows very well that people will sing his praises and treat him with respect and honor when they become aware of so and so person Allahu Akbar he will become very happy that's when people begin to let others know of what they have done and what they have not done May Allah Azza wa Jalla protect us dear viewers of Madani channel. May Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala grant us the tawfiq that whatever we do should only be for his pleasure and not for any person in the world. The poet says so beautifully. Mera hai amal bas tere waaste ho Mera hai amal bas तेरे वास्ते हो कर खलास ऐसा आताया इलाही कर खलास ऐसा आताया इलाही Amin, Amin. Bijahi Bijahi Nabi Nabi Amin. Amin. So they are who judge, they are ibadat guzars, they are abid and pious worshippers, devoted Muslims out there who brag about their devotions. They brag about the, the acts of worship that they have performed. Some wealthy people perform Hajj and Umrah again and again and keep in the mind the number of the Hajj and Umrah pilgrims that they have performed. They keep the number in mind of how many Hajjs. how many umrah they performed and you know what happens dear viewers without even being asked and without any need they even inform others that they have performed hajj and umrah and have visited medina and makkah so many times they do not realize that they may fall prey to ostentation they do not realize that shaitan is actually tossing and twisting them <laughs> shaitan is somewhere down the line going to add and whisper the ostentation and the showing off and the ego into his heart where he might start bragging about what he has done They do not realize that they may fall prey to the ostentation entering the blessed Hatim is just like entering into the holy Kaaba. Do we know the narration dear viewers because the semi circle known as the Hatim e Kaaba this is part of the Kaaba. If anyone read salah in there it is as if he read namaz inside the holy Kaaba. Very seldomly people even be focused that I got a chance to read two rakat namaz there because almost every person gets a chance to read namaz there. You talking about your experience of kissing the Hajar e Aswad We understand it's not easy for everyone to kiss, but maybe as you narrate your story and your walkya of how you reached there, you might express or might expose some other ibadat which was just a secret between you and your Creator. It all depends on the niyat, and this is why the first hadith of Sahih Al Bukhari is in Namal Aamalu Bin Niyat that the basis of everything is your niyat and your intention. Let me give you this beautiful example. We're talking about disclosing the secrets of your ibadat. Why it's important not to let others know about your ibadat. Hazrat Sayyiduna Sufyan Thawri he was a renowned muhaddith of his time he was invited by a person who accepted the invitation at this rich man's home yani Sufyan Thawri rahmatullahi ta'ala ali accepted the da'wat and the invitation of a rich man so when he attended the house of this rich man the host the rich man said to his servant just before the food could be dished out he says to his servant serve the food in the utensils which i brought on the second occasion of my hajj allahu akbar 
listening to this, dear viewers of Madini channel, the moment he said this, Sayyidina Sufyan Thawri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said, Oh poor man. Yani he was a rich man in terms of worldly wealth, but Sufyan Thawri refers to him as a poor man. You have wasted two hajj in one sentence. Allahu Akbar. You have thrown away two pilgrims, yani two hajj pilgrimage. Just by one sentence. In other words, this man, this host, wanted Sufyan Thawri to learn that he brought this utensil from his second journey. So, number one is he announced that he went for Hajj twice, and number two, he bought this from there. And what his niyat was only between Allah and himself. But Shaitan takes advantage of this. May Allah grant us the dawlat of ikhlas, sincerity. May we never do things to show others and to please others because they could never give you the reward for what you do. Only Allah can reward you. No one in the world can give you sawab for what you do. Dear viewers, from this we learn that there is a matter of concern for those who unnecessarily inform others about their actions, about their Hajj and Umrah, about how many Salat al Nabi you have recited, about how many times you read your Tahajjud Salah in a week, in a month, in a year. Yani, there's a matter of great concern for fame. It is for fame and name people do these things. People call themselves Hafiz al Quran, Qari al Quran, Ali Medin, Mufti al Islam. Sometimes a person is not deserving of the title. But his nafs becomes happy when people call him that. Sometimes if somebody asks you your name, and if you never mention the title with it, the nafs gets hurt. Why didn't you rectify yourself and make it known that you are a doctor, that you are a professor, that you are a maulana and alim? Because of not saying it, I never deserved the respect and the fame. By concealing this, nobody respected me. So people want to make themselves known. And this is not themselves, this is the nafs which causes a person to do that which he's not supposed to do. Let me tell you about one encounter between shaitan and a saint of Allah Azza wa Jal. A beautiful parable which will enlighten your heart. On the day of Hajj, a saint saw shaitan in the form of a human being in the plains of Arafat. Weak and pale-faced, shaitan was weeping with his back broken. When asked about his back being broken and for the reason why he's weeping, shaitan replied and said, since these hajis, yani these hajj pilgrims, have gathered here for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, they will not be disgraced by him. I am afraid that all of them may be forgiven. Allahu Akbar. So he said, the reason for this weakness was those people who traveled and came from far and places here. He says, if these travelers in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal were following my path, that is full of negligence and sins, I would like it very much. This person says to the saint of Allah on the plains of Arafat, mentioning the reason for his pale face, he said that the help of people given to each another in performing the acts of worship has turned my face pale. That Muslims help each another. Amrun bil ma'roof wa nahyun anil munkar. Whereas you promote that which is good and you forbid that which is evil. People are helping each another which has caused my face to become pale. The devil, shaitan, is saying to the saint of Allah, when a person makes dua to Allah, because he was asked why his back was broken, so shaitan replied, when a person makes dua to Allah, Ya Allah, bless me with a good end at the time of my death. Shaitan said, at that time, I am greatly troubled and I wish that he would consider his pious deeds to be important, bragging and boasting about them so that at the time of his death or before that, all his deeds are already destroyed. Allahu Akbar. I also fear that he might realize that one should not be proud of his good deeds and should be humble seeking the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. So I would like to ruin his deeds before he reaches that path. Whereas a person brags about his amal. Because shaitan akhri waqt mein hazir hota hai. He comes and appears in various forms. According to one narration, he comes in the forms of your loved ones that passed away before you. Perhaps in the form of your dada, in the form of your uncle and aunt, maybe if they left this world before you. And he will come in those forms that you recognize and he will come and tell you, hey, I died and passed away before you and I'm telling you now that I have tasted death and telling you that Islam is not the true religion. Astaghfirullah, ala a'udhu billah. Then shaitan in the form of a human being motivates the dying person to leave Islam. That is why Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, at the time of his deathbed when he was counting his last final moments, Allahu Akbar, what a great pious person. His son inquired about him, Abba Huzur, what is the matter? So the father says to the son, son, you inquired about my health, whereas the devil, shaitan, was just here by me at this moment and was taking sand and soil from the ground and placing and rubbing upon his head. And he says, oh Ahmad, looks like you will protect and save your iman from me. 
O my son, I said to the devil, to the accursed shaitan, no shaitan, I don't trust you until I have my last breath in my body. In other words, until I'm still breathing, I can't trust you because you are here and you are after my faith. And this is what shaitan does. But see what shaitan said to this pious saint that I make people brag about their good deeds, about their amale saliha, so that I fear because they might leave the dunya with their kalima. So let me ruin their iman, let me ruin their good deeds at least, so that at the time of death they got no more good deeds left. Astaghfirullah. So this is something very important. After listening to this parable, dear viewers, we have learned that we should not take this for granted. We should understand our desires, we should understand our situation, we should understand that we are in this world doing all those virtuous actions not to get the wows and the wonders from the people, get attention from people. If you fed a poor man food, expect no recompensation from him. Expect no thanks and du'as from him. In fact, you supposed to give him blessings and du'as. You help him with the food, you take his du'as if he gives you, but don't expect that from him in return. Expect the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali once said to his slave, he says, I wish to perform hajj. Do you have any money? Allah Akbar. Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali said to his slave, I wish to perform hajj. Do you have any money? Imagine being the khalif of his time is asking his slave, Muzahim, do you have any money? Allah Akbar, he replied saying that he had little more than 10 dirhams. Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali then said to him, how can hajj expenses be met with such a small amount? So then they never went for hajj, but after a few days, Muzahim said, oh Amir al-Mu'mineen, get ready. He asked him why? He says, because we have received 17,000 dinars, golden coins from the wealth of Banu Marwan. Allahu Akbar. So Umar bin Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali said, deposit them into Baytul Mal. Look at the answer. He says, deposit this money 17,000 dinars into Baytul Mal, into the treasury. If they are halal, we have already taken as much as we needed. And if it is haram, we do not need them. Feeling that this response disappointed his slave, Muzahim. So Amir al-Mu'mineen then said to him, If I do anything for the pleasure of Allah, you should not be disappointed by it. If I do anything for the sake of Allah, then don't get disappointed by it. He says, because my nafs prefers elevation and to have the best thing. This is what my nafs always desires me to have. Even after achieving some standing, it instantly makes efforts to achieve even more higher ranks than I have right now. Among the official provisions, the highest position is Khalifa, which my nafs has already obtained. Umar bin Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi ta'ala says to his slave, now it is only desirous of paradise. I want nothing else except Jannat, so please, this money which you have got, deposit this money into Baytul Mal, and whatever is halal from it, we have used it. Allahu Akbar. And whatever is haram, we do not need to use it, because that's not halal for us. It is a right and the haq of others. Look at how beautifully he explained to him that this is what your nafs and my nafs will desire, that let's go, let's take this money, spend it and go for it. But I only right now desire to please my Rabb Allah Azza wa Jal and not my nafs. This is how the pious predecessors identified the dealings of nafs, how tricky and how dangerous and how detrimental this can be. Unfortunately, we aren't like them, dear viewers. We are not like the pious predecessors who will understand the tricks of the nafs, who will understand how the nafs works. We just love to be loved by all. We want attention from all. We want, if we're not called at some place, we take offense to that, dear viewers of Madini Channel. Shaitan, plots to pull hujjaj and many other ibadat guzar people, any yani worshippers towards sinning during the blessed help, hajj pilgrimage or in the month of Ramadan when tilawat al quran pak is recited, there are races that are happening or that will happen in the month of Ramadan. People will be phoning each other, I finished 10 Quran, how many Qurans you finish? I finished 15 quran pak Now you start narrating the timings as to when you read the quran pak Sometimes if it's for the sake of motivation, mashallah, alhamdulillah, but how many of us even have control over the nafs? We don't have control over the nafs. Shaitan will make you say that which you're not supposed to say. And in that one sentence, just in that one sentence, you could just ruin all of the mehnat and the hard work you may have done for the day. Even if a person was able to do any good deed, his nafs just never allowed him to conceal that good deed. Allahu Akbar. May Allah Azzawajal grant us such eyes that are the eyes which cries, dear viewers of Madani channel. Such eyes which is always fearful 
for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always shedding tears in his path, dear viewers of Madini Channel. On this note that time has come to change. If we don't control this nafs, this nafs will make us real slaves. Instead of becoming the true bondsmen and the slaves of Allah azza wa jal, we have, because of becoming obedient to the nafs, nafs jaysay kehta hum waysay karte hain. Is nafs ko pehchano. Is nafs ko rectify karein. Let's rectify the nafs. Because the nafs doesn't allow a person to cry in the fear of Allah azza wa jal. The nafs wants a person to always be happy. You just desire and desire and these desires is like space. It's never ending. Just as in space there's no end, the desires of a man has no end. No matter how much you keep yourself happy, a person is never happy. And what you think makes you happy never makes you happy. And the more you gain, the more you need. This is insan. May Allah Azza wa Jalla grant us such eyes that always shed tears in His love. Such eyes that always cries due to the fear of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allahu Akbar. May we gain such eyes that always cries due, due to being separated from the beloved Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Sayyidi Allah Hadrat says in his poetry. <laughs> Roe jo umr bhar Yaad-e Nabi-e Paak mein Roe jo umr bhar Mawla mujhe talash Usi chashm tar ki hai Mawla mujhe talash Usi chashm tar ki hai Pehgham saba Lai hai gulzare Nabi se Aaya hai bulawa Mujhe dar Darbare Nabi se, Darbare Nabi se. Alhamdulillah, we have now, dear viewers, come to the end of the program in which we heard, don't be self-conceited of fame. Don't fool yourself, dear viewers of Madini Channel. Don't let shaitan fool ourselves as well. As we are outside the home environment, we should have the same style and andaz when we are with the family. We could be for others, doctors and professors and engineers and so on and so forth. Like an, it takes a wise man to behave like a child in his home. May Allah protect us. May Allah pardon us. Until next time, stay good, be good, do good and wherever you are, remember, I must strive to reform myself and the people of the entire world. Insha Allah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. How we spend our days, daily life of a Muslim. How we spend our days, daily life of a Muslim. How we spend our days, daily life of a Muslim.